Hello, this is Broyer and welcome to a brand new mini series where we're going to do a let's try and possibly a little bit of a review at the end of John Schaefer's At The Gates. John Schaefer is uh, the designer of Civilization V, if you're familiar with any of the other Civilization games on my channel. I, I guess mostly I play Civilization VI these days. Um, in fact, I don't know if I've actually done any actual videos of Civilization V, but I've done a lot of gameplay of Civilization V offline. And it's a, it's a great game. It really is. It's actually still... Uh, right up there on the Steam charts, right next to Civilization VI, being a, a nine-year-old game almost at this point. That's pretty impressive that it has like 35,000 players on any given day. It's, it's pretty, pretty solid game, uh, especially once you add it on all of the late expansion packs and things like that. So obviously John Schaefer knows a little bit about um, making video games and, and things of that nature. And you're going to see some elements of Civilization in this, but then you're going to see some elements of maybe other games that... Uh, that are unique and different. Uh, this is not a civilization game at all. I mean, I said you're going to see hints of it, but this is definitely not civilization. Uh, it's definitely a different take on maybe the forex type of thing. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the game. Like I said, we're going to do maybe a three episode let's try, and then I may do kind of a quick review uh, as a fourth episode just to kind of give my thoughts and, and things like that. So let's go ahead and get into the game. When you start the game, you have a lot of options here, but you only pick one of them at the moment, which is the Goths. We see all these other options, and in order to, to get these, as you can see, like the Huns, to unlock a faction, you must either form an alliance with its leader or conquer its capital while playing as a different faction. So if you wanted to play in as any of these other ones, you'd have to kind of play through the game a little bit to be able to unlock them. So we're going to have to start off with the Goths. It's the only one we have a choice of. Each of these does have a, like, a unique ability. So currently the Goths has a unique ability of starts with 15 food and 100 treasure. Default is 10 and 40, so just a little bit extra there. Like if we were to play as the Huns, for example, they can train horse archers and starts the game with one. That sounds actually pretty cool if we could play as the Huns. So, uh, but they cannot own structures. So anyway, we're going to get some of that a little bit more later. Like I said, we can only pick the Goths right now anyway, so we might as well just select those. But there are unique, unique bonuses for each of those. I call them civilizations. I guess they're more of a um, clans, if you will, or, or whatever. So I guess tribe is a better word because the clans are within the tribe itself. All right, so here we are within the game. And the first thing you're going to see as our tribes over there, um, we have those little pop-ups. The first thing you're going to see is, is the graphical style of this game. It looks very similar to like maybe the Civilization strategic map view, if you will. Uh, if you've ever seen that where, uh, especially like Civilization VI, this looks a lot like Civilization VI strategic map view, which... I kind of wish I could play a game on the strategic map view because the strategic map view is actually really cool and very artistic and things like that. But uh, so it kind of gives us that vibe, if you will. Um, another thing you're going to see is that he's gone a different way with the way the UI works. There's a lot of, of tool tips, you know, and as it talks about here, you get tool tips within tool tips within tool tips within tool tips and it keeps on going. I mean, obviously I'm doing the exact same tool tip here, but the, the point being that you can, you know, layer in these tool tips for just about anything on the map. For example, if I, can I, I, oh, another thing, you can add notes to anywhere on the map. I could say, look, um, we already know that these are horses. So there, I got some horses there. Cool. Um, you know, what is this? You know, things like that. So you can put labels just about anywhere on the map. You can put them on different units, different clans, things like that. So you can kind of, you know, help direct the... Um, information you're given however you want to you know have it so that's a pretty cool deal um so again welcome to the at the gates uh i'm probably going to ignore some of the basic game summary well you know what let's let's check it real quick basic game summary it's a turn-based strategy game similar to other 4x games for example civilization the three biggest differences are you only ever own one settled city which is your settlement here you'll spend more time managing resources and characters than some of the other games so there's a little bit of a I don't know, RPG element to it, maybe just sort of a little bit of that. And then uh, at the gates is generally more unpredictable and roguelike than other Forex games. So there's a lot of survival components to this game uh, that you might not see. I mean, obviously you have to survive a civilization, but if, if it takes on like a different flavor in this game, because you have to, you, you got to build up food to be able to survive the winter and things like that. And then of course, move your civilization around, your settlement around, because it does say you only have one, but it is a movable settlement and you move it around to other, you know, sources of, of, of resources and things like that until later on in the game when you can form a, a kingdom. Uh, the last point is important. In one game, you might have a huge source of treasure nearby, while in another, you'll be battling the endless winter of the far north. So the first couple of games, uh, I guess apparently it says they've made sure the map is somewhere in between, so they're going to kind of help us out a little bit for this first couple of games. The ultimate goal is to build a kingdom powerful enough to topple the Roman Empire. That's the whole 
premise behind at the gates is we're at the gates of the Roman Empire. We're one of these tribes that are out here trying to claw and scrape our way to become more powerful uh, so that we can kind of topple them a bit, you know, either militarily or by indirect means. You'll start each game by foraging for food before eventually settling down in one place and building more advanced and permanent structures from stone blocks. There are also other factions in the world who have already been on the map for a while. Some are immensely strong right at the start of the game, so that's something we got to be aware of and be careful with. Uh, you're not directly competing with anyone, but that doesn't mean you can ignore your neighbors. The other leaders have strong personalities and militaries, and if you upset someone, you might come to regret it. Uh, and then we can kind of jump into a little bit more about what we learn. I think we're going to go ahead and close this out because I've seen enough, you know, a little bit of gameplay here and there uh, and kind of looked at a new th enough things that I think I can kind of get a little bit of a feel for what we need to do. Obviously up here, sorry, on the top left, we have, um, we have our score. So, you know, that seems like probably a typical score that you might see anywhere. We have the number of clans we have, which is three of 12. We can have up to 12 clans currently. We're going to get a new clan in one turn and you get clans through your, um, your fame. But you also have to have enough food to be able to supply those clans. And as you can see right down here, we have food. We're losing one food per turn right now. So eventually we are going to starve if nothing else changes. And then above that, we have our treasure, which we could use to buy certain things from caravans and stuff. So uh, your first order of business is deciding which of your three clans to train in what professions. We suggest starting with an explorer. Uh, next, you want to choose a tech to begin studying. We suggest starting with agriculture. And those are some decisions we want to make. Uh, this is all you'll need to do on the first turn. Uh, though next turn you'll have a shiny new unit ready to begin exploring or harvesting resources from the map, etc., etc. So we're going to jump into that here in a moment. A lot of good tool tips and stuff, so that's going to be very helpful. So we'll go ahead and close that out. One thing it does do is it's up here in the top right corner. We kind of see what do we got to do next. Uh, we've got a few pieces of information here. These are the three clans that have joined us, and we'll jump into that here in a second. Uh, it also tells us that you know a new clan has joined. Uh, also tells us we're not training a clan currently, and we're not studying a profession. So we're going to have to kind of take care of those things before we can keep moving. So here's our new clans. We have Clan Relindus, ready, able, and willing. They are already uh, level three on discipline, but they don't have any profession yet because they're just brand new. So the discipline helps you to train professions within that discipline more quickly, more readily. And so you kind of like this guy's honor. We probably will want to train him in something within the honor discipline. Now we can retrain their disciplines and things like that, but there's certain uh, clans will want certain disciplines and things like that. So there's there's different costs there. So more than likely, most of the time, we'll probably keep them within the discipline that they have. But you're not like strictly like held to that necessarily. So it's a benefit if you do, but not necessarily a restriction that, you know, that, that you have to. Uh, this guy is stubborn, which means he does take plus two additional turns to train when switching discipline. So again, it goes back to what I was talking about. We could switch his discipline, but it's going to take him longer. Uh, might very rarely engage in mild feud if there's another clan on the same tile. Might extremely rarely engage in brawls. So... We probably want to keep this guy away from all of our other units. So since he's in the honor discipline, we'll jump into what those options are. One of them, I know that within the honor is that he can become, you know, a soldier of some sort, you know, some sort of military unit. Um, but there might be some other options that we use. But more, than, more often than not, we're going to want to keep this guy away from our other um, clans. Because if he starts feuding and things like that, that's going to make them unhappy and it's just not going to be good. He's also eager. Starts with three levels in honor. Perfect. Minus one turn to train, which is pretty cool. So it's going to take him quicker to train uh, a new profession and stuff like that. So this is actually going to be a pretty cool guy to have around as long as we keep him away from our other guys. So cool. Next clan. Oh, another thing you'll see, sorry, real quick, is that you do have plus one family in 12 turns. Each clan is made up of one or more families, as it says here, uh, that consume food per turn. Um, we get more family. More families help us get more bonuses towards resource production and combat power. So obviously we want these clans to be able to continue to grow bigger and bigger. Um, themselves, as well as getting more clans, uh, you know, within our, our tribe. So there's a combination of the two of those things. That's kind of where some of the maybe RPG element comes in where, you know, these guys have traits and then they can grow and things like that. So there's, there's some element of that to it. Uh, we have Clan Wilmot here. Um, let's see here. She is currently a profession woodcutter. She actually is already trained in a profession and she's disciplined crafting. So something to look into. Um, okay, so... Got a couple other stats here. Let's check. actually check down here. Wood collector. Starts in the wood collecting profession. So we don't even have to train her. That saves us a little bit of time. And we are going to need wood. Uh, mood is never worse than happy. Never has desires. Well, that is very helpful. I mean, happy people are are, are good. <laughs> you know, we want people to be happy because uh, if the, uh, let's see, when happy morale is increased by one quarter, resource production produced by one, increased by one quarter. Uh, resource production from constructed structures increased by one quarter and experience gained in all disciplines doubled. So 
all sorts of benefits for her being happy. And this is this. She's going to stay happy. That's just really cool. Um, cannot fight. So nothing, nothing else here. Again, we're going to go forge uh, timber here, probably with her here shortly. Next clan. And then we have Theobald. Clan Theobald. Uh, he is also loyal. That is really awesome to have two people that are loyal. So we're just, the happiness here is going to be great. Um, presumably, even if we stack the guy there could commit crimes, he's still probably, these guys would still not fall below happy. Um, we'll never engage in brawls or crimes. So actually what that means is, I wonder if the guy could even bring them into any sort of brawl or anything like that because he's, um, I guess the feuds could still happen. It doesn't say anything about feuds, but we don't have to worry about crimes here. And aggressive. Attack power increased by one quarter. Likelihood of having desires doubled. So since his attack power has increased a little bit, this might be a good idea to be a soldier at some point as well, if, if we ever come down to that. So let's jump into here. So settlement is idle. Again, we've already got somebody who's a woodcutter, so we don't have to worry about that. We do, it did suggest that we have somebody who can do food or we have an explorer. So if we train in profession, explorer is down here in the purple. Um, and the guy that we have that's already got a discipline is a hunter right now. It's got a pure Belinda. So we may actually make Theobald a... Um, Explorer. Honestly, though, you know what? Relendus being an explorer for a little bit until we turn him into something else, probably not the worst thing in the world. Take him two turns. It would take Theobald also two turns. So the only difference here is that because he's ranked three on honor, it would only take him one turn to become a hunter if we decided to go that route, which could be useful because we could get us some meat. Um, but I think we'll go ahead and make you an explorer. Oh, it's actually three turns for explorer. Never mind. I mis misread that. Um, in that case... We do have horses over here that we can start to get some food from um, if we wanted to. So that's always an option to start with to get a little bit of food. We're not sitting profession. Oh, sorry. Let's go back to the clan real quick. Um, so I think we will make Theobald here our explorer since it'll be a little bit quicker for him to do that. Although the sooner we get Relentis out of here, the better. So maybe making him a hunter first would actually be better. You know what? We need to take care of our food stuff. Let's make you a hunter. Get you out of the, the, the thing. And um, then we can make an explorer after that. And then not studying a profession right now. So here is effectively the tech tree. Uh, and if we can show more to show the massiveness of this tech tree. It actually gets pretty big here, as you can see. Uh, in fact, we can even show all even more here from the tree. So... There's a lot of information here, a lot of different options. We've got knights up here. We've got spearmen, archers, things like that. Those are all in the honor tree. We've got agriculture. It's got all this stuff here in the middle. So all of these texts effectively are new professions that we can train. And then most of them have, you know, upgrades as well. In fact, pretty much, I guess all of them have upgrades, except for like this base level one, which is just, again, just the base level type of thing. So all the professions themselves seem to have upgrades of some sort, which presumably makes them better at certain things. Um, so... We're going to go back to less. Let me start here, actually. This is probably a pretty good view to kind of get us a little bit of idea of what's coming down the road. Um, so we do have some grassland here, some some uh, wheat here. So we probably want to find somebody who can forge that because we need to get some food coming in. So presumably that is going to be gatherers. Fruit, honey, grapes, olives. So I guess not. Never mind. Reapers. Harvest wheat, barley, and flax. Okay, so we're going to need to get some reapers. So we're going to go ahead and train up a Reaper, and I think that is going to be... Oh, did that not actually lock in? Oh, already learned. Never mind. Very good. Um, I mean, is there any reason to do like an early upgrade this early? You must first finish studying Reapers and Agriculture. Oh, we've already learned Reapers, but we haven't learned Agriculture to actually do the Reapers. So once we get Agriculture, we'll actually get Reapers automatically. I get it. All right, well, then we'll start with agriculture because that will unlock that. And that is the end of turn one. 14 minutes into the game, we're already, <laughs> we're just now finishing our first turn. But there's a lot of setup and discussion there. So let's go ahead and get things going. Hopefully these next few turns go a little bit quicker here. All right, so there is Relendus as our, um, our new, uh, what am I saying? Hunter, right? So he's going to come over here to the horses and he's going to start foraging those to start getting a little bit of food. And I think that's going to be helpful. We're actually starting to make a lot of food now just from that. So that is a huge boost to us. we got a new clan here, Clan Sorel. Sorel. Uh, he is creative. Training time halved in 
some of them and training time doubled in some of the other ones. So some of the more crafting and kind of knowledge based ones, he seems like he's half. So that's pretty cool. And what is else did it say? Creative it, um, likelihood of having desires doubled. So desire is something that if he, he wants something and we give it to him, he'll be happy. If we don't, he'll be unhappy. So something to look into. Fastidious. Training time doubled. Resource production increased by half. Resource production from construction structure increased by half. So he looks like he'll do pretty good about getting resources from us. But the training time stuff is not, you know, pointing to that so much. I don't know. We'll look into it and see anything else from him. Uh, no discipline, no, no nothing, no profession yet or anything like that. Switch disciplines. Uh, okay, because we trained a new discipline, we can have somebody switch into that discipline and get some points right away. Um, and, and the discipline we just grabbed was harvesting to become, you know, like a farmer and stuff. So who do we want to have that? Um, I mean, I'm tempted to give to him just because he is fastidious. He's going to have more resource production. But obviously his training time will go up a little bit. So as long as we get over the training time hump, we might actually be okay. Um, I think that's okay. Let's give it to you. And then we're going to, to train you in a profession of Reaper. It's actually going to take one, one turn. So that's actually going to be quite nice. Uh, so it's idle. And then, oh, did you, I did not lock it in, did I? Okay, no, we're good. We're good. And study profession. Perfect. All right. So what else do we want to do? Um, Anything else on our map? We got some stone over here, which we, we need to, it's unidentified. We need to send a digger or a surveyor over here to identify this. So how would we get a digger or a surveyor? Diggers down here under metalworking, surveyors down here under discovery, which we would need discovery to get explorers. I think I'd like to get an explorer at some point, just to be able to go explore the map a little bit. So let's start with that. Let's get a just that and kind of get that going with uh, be able to see what we got around us because we're going to need to move at some point once we clear out a lot of this. We do have a lot of wood around us, so that is very good. In fact, actually, what I should be doing, and I should have done this from turn one, is enter settlement. Um, oh, that's, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to. I was going to enter settlement. Um, how do I get into the settlement? I'm being really weird. Well, new clan has joined. We got Clan Einar. He is stubborn. Again, switching disciplines is bad for him. We already seen that one. Gregarious. Training time for social professions halved, which grants no experience unless in a social profession. So he has to be in a social profession. No other clans on the tile may commit crimes. Oh, that's interesting. Never engages in fusion with other clans. So he could actually stack with that other guy and prevent him from uh, committing crimes and things like that if we wanted to. All right. Um, switch disciplines. And then we just got the Explorer one which, I mean, it's not really a social profession. What what are, what are social professions? Like what counts as social? Actually, you know what, let's do it this way. Let's go into, let's go look at our clans. Let's go check here, social professions. Some professions are considered social, which can affect how long it takes to train. They're recognized by the little little person, little speaking icon, exclusively found in honor and discovery disciplines. So on that note, then I feel like making him a discoverer, like some sort of dis discovery profession would, um, could be useful. And do we see any of those? I don't see any of them like, like jumping out at me. I mean, I would assume traders would be, yeah, okay, there we go. Now I see it there. I think I am going to go ahead and give him this um, because it will, um, oh, it didn't give it to him. I, I, I missed, did I miss my chance? Did I miss my chance to give him the, the new thing that we just discovered? Maybe I did. Okay, well, whatever. We'll go ahead and train you as an explorer, though. I think that's going to be helpful. And go from there. I do want to get you kicked out and I want to get you kicked out because I want you guys to go start doing some stuff. Oh, that's what I wanted. Okay. That's what I want. Okay. So let's go back to here. Pick you. There we go. There we go. Now we've got the discipline. 
So now we can train you in a profession. That's what I'm just looking for. We want you to be an explorer. Perfect. Did that work? I can't tell that it's working. Sometimes it, it, it looks a little weird to me. Um, study profession. So we've got the explorer. I mean, moving our up the way up to surveyors could be good. Uh, getting up to uh, diggers could be useful to be able to identify the metal deposits. So let's go ahead and get metal working out of the way. Maybe we can get somebody who can become a digger. We're going to get another clan in two turns anyway. Um, and now here's our, our food guy. And here's one of our lumber people. So, so any like difference here? I guess this is actually forest. This is just brush. This over here is forest. So let's move you over here to this forest. And so you're going to start foraging that. We'll get to some wheat. And you are going to start, well, you forage here in a second once you have some movement. Not training a clan, huh? Oh, did that not, it still didn't train, huh? Ah, there we go. Okay, so I, I must have kept canceling it or something. So when you start seeing it, when we see some evidence of like different, you know, grasses and things like that around us. Um, so this can be good to kind of go out and explore here in a moment. So here is our explorer. So, um, you know, let's start going up this way and seeing if, seeing what's up this way, because we might need to find a place to, uh, to move to at some point in the near future. Uh, we did just get, um, the metal working, so we can give somebody a boost in metal working. Do we have anybody left that really doesn't have a boost? We, you technically don't. You have good attack power. Um, which would kind of make you a good, like I said, a good soldier of some sort at some point, but we may go ahead and give you this one for now. It's going to be okay. Clans are idle. This is uh, our woodcutter, so we're going to start foraging there. Start getting a little bit of wood coming in. And, you know what, as long as you've got that discipline for now, why don't we just go ahead and make you a digger? So we can start getting some minerals coming in. Uh, and I keep, again, there we go. I'm, I keep doing it the wrong order of things. Study a profession. So what do we want to do next? I mean, food is obviously going to be very critical for us to kind of make sure that does not kind of, you know, go away. So we haven't done anything with livestock. That could get us up here to uh, things like meat cutters and things like that. I mean, we know we have wheat. We know we have a lot of other grasses up this way. We've just got some, um, what do we got right here? Large field of wheat. Is this more wheat? This must be a small field of wheat. So we got a lot of wheat around. So I think things that will benefit our wheat production could be useful. Bread makers could be useful because it will turn wheat and barley. Um, it'll actually double the production of our wheat and barley. That actually could be really good. There's another one, tillers. Double the production of all farms. Now, we're a long ways away from that one. But I actually think going into bread worker, bread makers might not be a bad idea. It does consume lumber or timber. So that's something to think about. Why not? We got a bunch of, of possible food options here. Let's go down that route. About to get another clan here in one turn. We can increase our clan limit at some point. Um, we, we don't have the option right this second. I think you have to have parchment for that. Let me see. You have to have cloth. Spend five cloth to raise your support limit by six. So it's definitely something we can look into. Uh, you'll most likely be interacting with your clans, which start inside your settlement and can be trained in various professions, some of which allow them to move around the map as units. The more clans you have, the more you'll be able to do, but also the more food your tribe will consume. Makes sense. Uh, resources are harvested from map deposits in dense forests by forages and later in the game by more efficient and expensive structures. So at some point we'll get structures to be able to harvest a lot of this stuff. Each turn represents half of a month and eventually it will become winter. Most sources of food cease production during cold months. So make sure you have enough turns of food saved up before it starts getting chilly. Winter is usually around 10 turns long. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, currently, we'll look here in a second. Currently, how much food are we actually minus? Does it tell us? Don't seem like it tell us exactly how much food we're losing. And we're only making 3.8. So, you know, whatever we're making minus whatever we're spending, it's, it's netting 3.8. Your growing fame has convinced Clan Rud, Rud, Rude, to join you. So, oh, this is actually going to be another um, agriculture one. Um, Smooth is always content. Okay, fair enough. Food consumption is have. That's that's useful. Cannot be trained in social professions. Cannot be ennobled. 
never has desires, never engages in feuds. So this is pretty just just kind of just calm person. And he starts with two levels of agriculture. So we might need to get another farmer up to maybe come over here and identify this uh, this over here or one of the actually we already know what this is. So actually moving up to this spot could be useful. Clans are idle. So this is our digger dude. Let's move you up there. Identify that. You are our explorer, so let's come down here. All right, we're starting to see a little bit hint of somebody over there. Don't know who that is yet. Train in a profession. Let's go ahead and train you as a... I mean, another reaper would be useful because... Oh, I did that wrong again. I keep doing that wrong. Um, because it. Um, we have a lot of wheat over here that we can start picking up. You've met Serdic of the Saxons. Cool little artwork here for, for him. Apologies if the music is a bit loud. Hopefully I can turn that down a little bit in the post-production, so maybe it won't be too loud for you guys. So he's competitive, daring, Aryan Christian. Uh, he's cocky, relationship level plus one, leverage one. Uh, we can give you some food, we can give you some treasure. Uh, if you know what's good for me, offer me a token of your appreciation. Um, it does lower our reputation, but it does increase our influence and relationship level. Ten, ten, um, treasure doesn't seem that bad. We'll give you a little bit of treasure. Why not? We're not using it right this second. All right, clans are idle. So you're going to come start moving around this way. We've got some berries up here. We'll start kind of making a little bit of a, a path back around just to see what our borders are looking like. Uh, we also have a caravan has arrived. So every few turns, we get a caravan now which will um, kind of sell us stuff and um, we can buy stuff from them or we can sell stuff to them to, to, you know, to get some good benefits. So right now, you know, we see a few things here. We got, he's got a really, a, a large amount of barley right now that he, he can sell us. It's not necessarily a great price, but it's, you know, he's got an extra of that. Looks like he'll buy steel at a premium right now, which we don't have any of. He looks like he'll buy iron at a, at a premium, it looks like, because I think the green number represents, this is higher than normal. Um, we could buy some parchment for him for various reasons, but I don't think we need anything from him right this second. We could also upgrade the caravan so that they start bringing more stuff in the future, um, which could be useful. Uh, and honestly, be able to get some cloth, so if we want to increase our clan limit. You know what, why don't we just take the time to upgrade the caravan at this point, and that'll be all we do for now. Clans are idle. So what do we got? We got our other gatherer person here. Um, why don't you come out here and see if you can start farming this large field of wheat. This down here is only, what, a medium? Or just a regular field, but not, not even a label. This one's a large one, though. Settlement is idle. So there's really nothing else to do for right now. we got another clan in two turns. So when there's nothing to do, the next best thing is to produce a little bit of treasure. It's not much. It's five treasure per turn. But, um, you know, it, it will add up, I guess, at some point. It's better than doing absolutely nothing. now train bread makers so i mean it's always the possibility that like one of these guys becoming a bread maker while the other one farms could actually be better for us uh if we we're going to do that actually almost do i want to bring this guy back to be a bread maker instead or not you it would be this guy like what are you what was your benefits again nothing like specifically like jumping out at me that tells me one way or the other that it was to be amazing I think actually bringing you back to become a bread maker wouldn't be a bad idea at this point. Although, honestly, do we really want a bread maker that's going to consume lumber until we have more than, you know, one of these fields being produced? Probably not, actually. I think having two of these and then if we want to do a bread maker after that might be a better move. Right, clans are idle. This is you are going to identify the deposit and you're going to let's go ahead and come up to this way. That's going to be fine. And again, start kind of making a circle around back towards, you know, this side of things. Settlement is idle. Again, still nothing to do. We got a clan in one turn. We're going to go and just produce some treasure. Study a profession. So we got bread makers available. So at least that's an option. We also can get farmers. Can construct farms out of timber or stone blocks on plants. Um, these structures produce more than foraging with a gatherer or reaper. So instead of having the reaper, we can make a farmer who can put us a farm down 
on those food tiles and you know that'd be a way to get a bunch of food back it's not a bad idea and again i'm kind of focusing more on the food up front right now than anything else i do think we're gonna need more woodcutters at some point but uh, that's something we can look into as we go a little bit further why not let's do farmers and kind of really double down on the agriculture side of things all right you are going to for now start foraging this I think that'll be fine. All right, Clan Belmar, who are independent woodsmen. Oh, that's helpful because we do want some more. Um, oh, this is just because they, they have no movement points entered. Okay, never mind. I was thinking it was like better wood type stuff, but you know, less movement points is a thing. Experience gained in all disciplines tripled. Oh, wow. Training time for settled professions increased by half. Training time for social professions doubled. Interesting. Never has desires. Man, we have a lot of people that don't ever have desires. Okay, well, that's could be useful. Um, let's go ahead and move you kind of up this way somewhere. Oh, you're in the rain. So the rain stops your movement from into and out. Actually, I'm not sure how he was able to move across here. Maybe you can move within the rain block, but not... Oh, no, it just increases movement cost. I thought there was a certain... Maybe it's blizzards. Maybe it's blizzards that allows you... It means you can't move while it's within it or something like that. I thought there was some sort of weather effect that, that affected, you know, movement more than just increasing the movement cost. But even increasing the movement cost is, you know, not a small thing. All right, so you do not have a discipline and you do not have a profession. Um, I mean, in order to, to, to supply the farms and the bread makers, we are going to need a lot more wood. But I think training you in agriculture to start doing some farming. Well, we already have two people for that. So we would, no, we need one more. So I would like two farms and then a bread maker kind of double that. I think that would be a good starting just to try it out. Maybe, maybe there's a break point where you need three farms before you really becomes worthwhile. But I think training you in agriculture for now is going to be okay. All right, we're going to go ahead and put a cut in there. Um, I think that was a decent first episode. We got through a you know, decent amount of early information. But when we come back next time, hopefully we get a little more into the farms, the bread making, and some of the other kind of the ways that the professions really kind of benefit each other and things of that nature. So hopefully you're enjoying this. Probably going to do a couple more episodes of this. Um, I'm going to do kind of a goal of about three episodes. Let's try here. And then I might do like a quick review of what the game, you know, how I, how I like the game and things like that. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and whether you like this or not. And if you want to see more of these, let's try review combinations of, of other video games. And if you do, what video games do you want to see? So I do appreciate it. Thank you and goodbye.